in this video help file we're going to look at how we can help children to make those links between the algorithm that we created earlier and some of our code and we can help them to sort of build that code up and show them how it works okay so here what I've done is I've gone to stage and I've actually in stage I have made two different backdrops and one of those backdrops I've imported a picture of um, a screenshot of my computer quiz algorithm the one that I heard earlier and I think I'm going to put that as a little picture on um, the uh, website so you can just download it if you want okay so there it is and I've also just built in a tiny little bit of code which is basically when space key pressed next backdrop so can you see space key and then back out so I can literally go and refer to that um, computer quiz algorithm as we go okay I'm gonna stick to the cat at the moment okay but of course the children will go and choose a, a, a sprite that's better for them so let's have a look first we've got this creator variable called score you can if you if you never created a variable before you go down to data and we have this lovely make a variable button which is great and then we just type in the word score now what's lovely about variables in computing is we always name them after what they actually do <laughs> so score or points um, would be good names okay and let's just click OK and that actually brings us up the nice little score box at the top notice if I click here I can make it appear or disappear okay I can also use these blocks to make it appear or disappear here we go hide the variable I just left clicked on that and show the variable uh, left click and you can see it appears up in the top left hand corner over there okay so that's what those blocks do all right now I wouldn't necessarily talk through all of these things at this early stage I'm just gonna make it but I'm just gonna tell you about this because that's important okay so if we think of a variable as like a box okay and we're storing storing things in there it can be numbers it can be text but in this case we're scoring mostly numbers okay so we've got this set and change a variable and set a variable means that we empty the box out first okay so if I set the score to zero I empty that box out first okay and then it sets it to whatever number I've set in there change score just does whatever it says and it doesn't empty the variable out so watch the score here if I click on change score by one can you see the scores going up by one if I click on it again it doesn't empty it out it just adds another one in there makes it two and if I change it again you will see it makes it three okay change it again it makes it or oh, did I click on that makes it four and you can see there but of course if I set that score to zero it empties the whole pot out okay and puts whatever we've told it in there afterwards okay so those are those but we're not going to worry about those too much at the moment okay um, so let's see, create a score a variable called score and use a variable called answer okay so that's this one here okay the answer and we, we're going to use that in a little bit okay so we can just pop that over there for a second okay and then we're going to ask the user a question okay but actually before we go there it's nice to have a little bit of um, just starting blocks to actually start this program off so let's go and choose one of these when green flag or when a key is pressed or when the sprite is clicked to start the program off let's maybe let the children have a choice on those sorts of things okay although probably my favorite is the green flag one notice that you can zoom in a little bit over here as well okay so children can actually see that and if you're using a, an interactive whiteboard or um, a, a screen it's it's sometimes quite useful to just zoom in so children can see stuff a bit so here we go when the green flag is clicked okay and you know I'm a big one for adding a few extra bits maybe even welcoming people to our maths quiz okay um, uh, maths quiz okay and those sorts of things okay um, now we do need to because we've created this variable called score it's quite a good thing if we just set the score to zero right up the top there. 
okay we do it nice and earlier and that just empties all the score out and just sets it back to zero so we get a nice fresh quiz when we're starting and then we've got this ask the user a question okay so let's have a little look at that asking the user a question bit so let's go to sensing and let's have ask the user a question okay maybe even do a question that we did earlier in our algorithm stage so three times three that was one I did okay and it's important that children understand that when we run this it's going to actually put the answer inside this answer block it's going to transfer it into this little answer variable and in fact they can click the little tick here so that they can see what comes up in here so let's run our little block of code and see what happens okay it's set the score to zero it's done the welcome bit and here we have this lovely little input box and whatever I type in here okay is going to go inside the answer one let's click the tick or press um, enter on the keyboard and can you see fish fingers now up the top there and actually if we click on the answer block can you see fish fingers in there as well I love that bit that's one of my favorite bits do encourage the children to go and test that and put some silly things in notice that every time this one runs it clears that little answer variable out again so you get a blank one okay to use again and again and again so of course if I put nine in there can you see nine is up in the answer block goes over there and nine is also in this little answer um, uh, variable here okay so there we go we've got nine and nine let's go back and have a look at our algorithm if the answer stored in the answer variable is equal to the right answer say correct and increase the score variable so if the answer and there's our key and in fact we've got an if and we've got an else okay it's worth saying and if we go and start looking for ifs we could actually do this using two of these instead if and if all right but actually scratch provides us with a slightly easier solution for younger children which is the if or else which is why i wrote that in that way okay so here we've got that if or else block this is what we call a conditional selection block it actually makes a switch okay and then we're going to put a little condition in here okay now if you've never done conditions with children do some at this point with them okay uh, if you've got brown hair stand up and rub your head okay um, you could do some if or else ones as well and I have some examples of those on the website and I'll, I'll link those in the maths quiz as well for you to, to try there's some physical ones that you can go and play as well okay so this is a conditional selection block and we're asking for a condition okay but it said if their answer stored in the answer variable is equal to the right answer so what am I looking for well I, I need this answer um, variable that's good okay and I'm also looking at that I'm going to need the equals so let's look around and in fact we find the equals in the operator section okay so if that answer is equal so in fact there's the equal that's going to do that comparison see if they're the same and in fact I can drag this one over and snap it in one side okay and in the other side I need to type that right answer okay now actually in, a, in most other programming languages we'd be storing that right answer in its own variable as well but we're simplifying this a little bit okay to, to help us um, work at it at a younger age as well okay so that's our if that's our first little bit but actually it says um, say correct all right so let's go and find a say command and I want it to say it for a few seconds that's quite important so say correct okay and increase the score variable so where would I find something that would increase the score variable oh maybe changing the score variable okay um, by one okay um, else their answer stored in the answer variable is not the same as the right answer so yeah, this is the else bit if it's not okay and we're going to say something like uh, wrong in here okay and we're also going to decrease their score 
okay and by decreasing it really we're just going to change that score by minus one okay now that is one way of doing that now there are some advantages and disadvantages of this okay in some ways we've introduced the variables straight away so that's quite useful for us in in terms of comparing it to our original algorithm but we have introduced some quite complex things very early on so you may want to just leave the whole score thing okay until a bit later and that's certainly what I've done in a lot of my earlier programming things and just concentrated on this uh, conditional selection block and on this input of getting something and doing that comparing as well okay uh, we might decide to actually um, build a question like this and even give the children some chance to actually build some other questions on top of here before we get anywhere onto the variable as well uh, a quite a nice way is to actually ask them to show them this all right so here we go I'm right clicking on the ask block and I'm duplicating this this allows me to have a total copy of this and pop it on there do you know what I tend to do? I tend to accidentally put it there and ask the children, when will you get that second question? And they, um, some of them will come up with the idea of actually, you, you only get that second question if you've got it wrong. Now, I purposely put that there because it gives, the, you know, that some children will understand the logic of that. And I have... Um, I have um, gone round and talked to children who've had a piece of programming like this and I, I thought it was a bug because often children drag things and put them in the wrong places but it's turned out to be that actually they just wanted to um, put that in there so you've got a second chance to to answer the question which I think is uh, you know which is, is good and very log very logical as well okay so we might give children a chance to duplicate these things okay and add their own questions in here all right maybe add some more things don't forget to change those answers as well okay etc etc and then of course once they've got a whole string of questions we might then go back to this all right maybe we'll reintroduce this quiz algorithm and look at where the quiz algorithm the score parts are as part of that and I think that's probably a better structured way but we're still actually building that algorithm in there okay um, but ultimately it, it, it's up to you how, how you build that and how you think it through with the children okay